book. Welcome students. Today we are going to make uh, a quick revision of evolution for NEET exam. Right. So you know in evolution we deal with uh, three basic things. One is how life originated. Second thing, if life originated, what are the proofs that there is evolution? Third thing is how evolution is taking place that is theories of evolution okay now then coming to first uh, origin of life it was a great mystery so everyone started thinking in their own ways how life might have originated <coughs> So according to some of these concepts, that is theory of special creation, that is God created all these organisms and believes that around 4000 years life has originated and all organisms were present from them to till today, there is no change in organisms, right. Then second concept is cosmozoic. So, cosmozoic means life came from other planets. It believes that life came from other planets. Arrhenius and others believe in this. Then, theory of spontaneous origin of life, which can be also called abiogenesis. abiogenesis right? So, for many years, people used to believe in this concept, spontaneous origin. Even great uh, biologists like Aristotle believed in this. And... Uh, the great taxonomist Linnaeus believed in theory of special creation. Then biogenesis. So one famous scientist by name Louis Pasteur who disproved a permanently spontaneous origin of life by doing an experiment on uh, that is called swan naked flask experiments. But he proposed another concept that life gives rise to other organisms. Right? Then Finally, the modern concept of origin of life based on organic evolution was given by Oparin and Harding. These are the two people, Oparin and Harding. So, this is the modern concept of origin of life. Now, according to this theory, what we can believe is uh, this Oparin first gave this idea, book also was written by him, Origin of Life. Then there, uh, there are few things associated with this and it is also called Coisurvate Theory because uh, they proposed uh, Origin of Life in a different way. Before going to that, a few points we'll see. Big Bang probably happened uh, 15 to 20 billion years ago and uh, Origin of Earth, uh, it is 4.5 billion years and origin of life 4 billion years and then non-cellular forms 3000 million years and cellular 2000 right so from this what um, operin and Haldane concept uh, we can summarize like this first uh, chemical evolution some simple compounds like uh, all right methane ammonia like uh, <coughs> substances were formed right when these substances were formed so methane <coughs> ammonia most abundant uh, gas was hydrogen and uh, high temperatures were there these were all combining in presence of high energy radiations coming from the solar because there was no umbrella like ozone umbrella. Many simple compounds were formed which combined and formed a hydrocarbons. Variety of hydrocarbons formed. These hydrocarbons combined to form monomers. Monomers means it includes like glucose, amino acids, then slowly purines, pyrimidines, sugars and these things were formed. When monomers formed, it resulted in the formation of polymers. 
polymers means like nucleoproteins. This step we can call it uh, chemical evolution. From this it gave rise to biological evolution, then gave rise to protobionts. So protobionts uh, means it includes structures like coisarvates. Colloidal droplets are called coisarvates. And these uh, coisarvates like things uh, then give rise to uh, anoxygenic uh, heterotrophs. From these heterotrophs probably chemoautotrophs originated. From these chemoautotrophs next uh, anoxygenic photoautotrophs then oxygenic photoautotrophs ultimately it gave rise to eukaryotes eukaryotes probably formed by invagination of the plasma membrane and certain organelles like mitochondria chloroplast which were believed to be free existing so Nick tells so chloroplast in mitochondria semi autonomous organelles sentiment then key then circular dna untundi and 70s ribosomes kuda untayi so these two organelles probably believed to be uh, proving that uh, bacteria like forms or organelles like chloroplast and mitochondria now once uh, producers have originated what happened it has changed so this evolution has revolutionized the environment and it resulted in the formation of oxygen now it became oxygenic environment but the interesting thing is evolution is one thing which you have to believe which you cannot uh, totally prove by all the things by experiments but uh, one of the thing was a little bit uh, proved and uh, it was uh, proved by experiments there was uh, uh, an experiment this experiment was conducted by miller and urey so miller and urey so what the people miller and urey so these two people they develop an apparatus similar to the uh, condition when life prebiotic condition so we say life originated in prebiotic soup that is the sea water where life has originated and life originated in uh, that is reducing atmosphere now present atmosphere is called oxidizing atmosphere this chamber contained variety of gases like methane ammonia uh, so here you see these are the things uh, that were seen so methane ammonia water and hydrogen when high energy uh, how to stimulate energy these electrodes fitted here created sparks that resulted ultimately and uh, there was the rain in atmosphere resulted in condensation of certain gases here these gases condensed when it passed through condenser like a rain water ultimately it resulted in the accumulation of certain organic compounds like certain amino acids like uh, glutamic acid so it resulted in the formation of certain substances like uh, glutamic acid alanine aspartic acid right so these are the amino acids that originate so it proves uh, right origin of life by the what is believed as uh, the coisarvate theory of origin of life and it was proved so that is the thing now and then uh, how evolution has taken place right and how to prove that evolution has taken place so let us take uh, the help of different branches that is if you study uh, when we study the morphology of organisms then we come across with the 
homologous organs and analogous organs. Homologous means those which have common origin but may be different in function. For example, thorns of bougainvillea, tendrils of cucurbita, they are performing uh, different functions but both of them are by origin same. You try to see this uh, four limbs of different tetrapods and to get more clarity let us see mammals. If you take hu human beings, so you see the four limbs of human beings. Now, so four limbs of human beings that is man, here, cheetah, whale, bat. In bat, what are present? Patagia, this is bat, patagia, wing like structures, whales, uh, flippers, and cheetah, the legs used for fast running. And man for limbs, uh, uh, you know, various purposes, right? Constructive and destructive functions. Right? Even in the structure, same but function different. Today, you can also take the examples of brain of vertebrates, heart of vertebrates. These are all homologous, even more parts of insects, right? Then, if you say same basic structural plan but different in function. Analogous, different structure and origin, but perform similar function. Then homologous organs definitely show common ancestry. This is the first thing that we have to do. strong evolution support you should say homologous organs only. So, because analogous organs do not suggest any common ancestry, then homologous organs are showing a <coughs> divergent evolution. They are showing divergent and analogous organs are showing convergent evolution, right? So, these are the examples. Flippers of uh, wings, bats, etc. Wings of insects and wings of bats, uh, these are examples, right? Now, <clears throat> from one common ancestral form, different forms are arising, then we say divergent. But independent forms due to common environment, common adaptation, they start supporting development. So that is uh, convergent. So you also try to remember homologous analogous organs. Another thing is vestigial. Organs which have lost functional significance are known as vestigial organs. Vestigial organs are supposed to say and functional in one, non-functional in ancestors like wisdom teeth in human beings, nictitating membrane in man, vestige, that is the plica similaris coccyx vestigial caudal vertebrae right then you can also say uh, sudden reappearance of ancestral characters is known as atavism sudden reappearance of characters is known as atavism <coughs> right and uh, connecting links means organisms which are transitional between two different groups they are described as <coughs> connecting links right in NCRT book, one more point was discussed, adapt to radiation. From one common origin, suppose they start developing in different lines. So starting from one point, but virtually evolving in all directions, you can call it adapt to radiation. Adapt to radiation happened in marsupials. Adapt to radiation happened in placental mammals. What are placental mammals? eutherians true placenta but when you try to compare both of them it becomes convergent evolution right when you at a time try to compare both of them it becomes convergent so here tasmanian ti wolf tiger cat banded anteater marsupial rat sugar glider marsupial mole bandicoot umbant kangaroo etc right then you could i run to compare it to the children of sorry placental mammals means what eutherians Austro australian marsupials means metatherian you run to compare just a okokati mole marsupial mole 
convergent then anti there and no band similarly mouse marsupial mouse spotted cascus lemur so these two lemur is a primate flying squirrel flying phalanger both are flying then uh, <coughs> tiger cat tasmanian tiger cat right bob cat wolf tasmanian wolf right these are the and uh, coming back to this is one so you are trying to prove with the help of uh, morphological studies then uh, we call it uh, morphological evolution then we can also say one more thing so geological time scale so if you take paleontological evidence so what is paleontology study of fossils is known as paleontology now this is one important thing ఇది ఎన్సీఆర్టీలో లేదు అని కొంతమంది వదిలేస్తుంటారు కానీ చార్ట్లో అన్నీ కూడా ఎన్సీఆర్టీ బుక్లో ఇచ్చారు కాబట్టి ట్రై టు ఫోకస్ ఆన్ దిస్ ఆల్సో జియలాజికల్ టైమ్ స్కేల్ సో దెర్ ఆర్ త్రీ మేజర్ ఇంపార్టెంట్ ఎరాస్ పెలియోజోయికెరా మిసోజోయికెరా సినోజోయికెరా పెలియోజోయికెరా హ్యాస్ కేంబ్రియన్ ఆర్డోవిషన్ సైలోరియన్ డివోనియన్ కార్బోనిఫరస్ అండ్ పార్మియన్ పీరియడ్స్ ఈచ్ ఎరా ఇస్ డివైడెడ్ ఇన్ టు పీరియడ్స్ యూ సీ హియర్ now ostracoderms originated in ordovician period right then coming to <coughs> fishes fishes originated in silurian period right <coughs> fishes originated in silurian period and fishes golden age is in devonian period and uh, if you see amphibians <coughs> amphibians origin is in devonian and uh, their golden age is so their golden age is in carboniferous period right so you see amphibians origin devonian golden age carboniferous permian period decline of many reptiles coming to second major era mesozoic era mesozoic era has triassic jurassic and cretaceous and uh, mammals originated in triassic period birds originated in jurassic and modern birds in cretaceous period and coming to uh, golden age of reptiles so that is in entire mesozoic era so you try to now focus on this reptiles originated in carboniferous golden ages in mesozoic era and uh, <coughs> what about mammals originated in triassic golden age in entire cenozoic era the presently running era is called cenozoic which has tertiary and quaternary periods are divided into epochs also here not only era period and also epoch then so one of the strongest evidence uh, for evolution comes from paleontology if you study <coughs> development embryology embryology there are two important scientist one is uh, uh, Ernest Haeckel another one is von Baer Haeckel believed uh, that on it is a theory amir winner ga the pair recapitulation theory and ontogeny repeats phylogeny or developmental history repeats uh, evolutionary history and then <coughs> So, but uh, the thing is haeckel believed that embryos of uh, higher forms resemble embryos adults of lower forms but von baer said embryos resemble only embryos not uh, adults so there is a embryological evidence paleontological evidence all these fossils are proving archaeopteryx is connecting link between 
reptiles and eels like that some certain fossil forms are there then peripetus is connecting link between annelida and arthropoda limulus is connecting link between annelida and mollusca like this there are several connecting links so in a brief history of evolution we have to study various things so there are different uh, concepts uh, try to be combined uh, in the same thing in NCRT book uh, but uh, we are trying to make uh, a division like first uh, <coughs> so origin of life and uh, evidences even physiology is a kind of evidence means uh, you see functioning of different uh, systems and similarly biochemicals uh, the hormones uh, and vitamin hormones uh, enzymes and various uh, biochemical substances in the body they are showing lot of similarity so that is providing evidence for evolution <coughs>